And joining us, he's the chairman of the House Intel Committee. Devin Nunes is with us. Uh, Congressman, good to see you again. Thanks for being with us. Let's good first get your take on the firing of the deputy FBI director, Andrew McCabe, and the statement of the attorney general. Well, as you know, we've had the FBI under investigation by our committee for a long time on FISA abuse and other matters. So it doesn't surprise me that Mr. McCabe went. Uh, however, our investigation still is ongoing. Uh, Mr. McCabe still owes us answers no matter where he's working. And eventually he's going to have to come forward and provide those answers. Yeah. Well, one of the things he's going to have to provide the answers, but I really see he even seemed to in his statement implicate uh, James Comey, did you catch that as well, that he knew about the leaks in the media? Yeah, I mean, that's why this is, this is becoming so difficult, right? There's so many witnesses now who have testimony all over the map, which is why I think you continue to see this call for somehow DOJ and FBI are going to have to have somebody who can actually investigate them and put all of this out there, you know, because we're continuing to have problems in Congress just getting the information that we need. Uh, the latest, the latest example of that, Sean, was uh, the text message, messages that emerged on Friday night. Uh, we did not have those text messages, and we had asked for those text, text messages uh, back in October, November, and December. So it's it's very difficult for Congress to get to the bottom of this. I mean, we every day we find out something new. However, I, I think at this point there's so many crimes that have to be investigated, uh, they need to get somebody over there who's going who's gonna to run a thorough investigation and maybe work with the IG when that report comes out. And do we know when we're finally getting this IG report? I mean, I keep hearing one, one former head of the FBI or top FBI official said it is pure TNT. Yeah, I don't. I have not seen it. Uh, I am not, and I have not been briefed by Mr. Horowitz. That is really under the jurisdiction of the Judiciary Committee and the Oversight Committee. However, they do have a lot of the IG does have a lot of information that my committee is very interested in uh, when it comes to what what we continue to look at and, and call it FISA abuse. Yeah, you know, James Kallstrom has been a longtime friend of this program, and he actually made this statement. Former assistant FBI director, high-ranking people throughout the government had a plot to protect Hillary Clinton from being indicted. In your opinion, based on what we know, and 18 U.S.C. 793, which says you cannot mishandle classified information, similarly, you cannot destroy it. Then, of course, you have subpoenaed emails that are deleted, acid wash, bleach pit, busting up devices with hammers. Do you have any doubt in your mind that those are crimes? Well, as, as you know, our committee continues to look at conspiracy. Uh, we're looking at obstruction. We're looking at misleading Congress. Uh, and also there's the statute and civil rights uh, code that involves, um, um, I think, abuse of power uh, and using your, your position to, to go after someone personally. Actually, uh, Greg Jarrett, I've seen him on your show many times. He's talked about this, uh, this provision. And so there's many crimes that have to be looked at, you know, but I keep reminding people, Congress cannot prosecute. All we can do is make a referral to the, to the Justice Department. And then the challenge is, is who are we going to refer it to? Uh, because as you know, we don't know who over at the Justice Department uh, is involved in this, who would have to be recu you know, recuse themselves because of their involvement or their knowledge of what happened over the last few years. Yeah, I mean, now the public, I mean, this poll that I referred to in the last segment about the deep state is very telling. I, I want to ask you about two issues involving James Comey. Uh, the president pointed out a, a testimony that, the, that James Comey was under oath to Senator Graham. Have you ever been an anonymous source uh, or known someone else to be an anonymous source? He said, never, no. Um, did he, do we now know that's not true with the leak that we know that he was involved in? Well, you, you bring up a, a very valid point. So somebody is lying, right? So we don't know we don't know who, but those stories don't jive. Now I'm sure by you know this is all out there now. They're going to try to start to cover up uh, their tracks. But this is what this is why we have to have them back in to answer these questions. You know, we still have a questionnaire that's out that they have not responded to. Uh, that's unacceptable. You know, we needed to know when exactly did they learn that the dossier was paid for uh, by the Democratic Party and the Hillary Clinton campaign. 
we do have evidence of what Hillary Clinton did as it relates to the email server. We do have evidence that, in fact, an exoneration was written before an investigation. We do have mm -hmm. evidence that Hillary fixed a primary, and we do have evidence that she paid for a phony dossier, funneling money through a law firm, and that that dossier that she paid for was then used to get and obtain a FISA warrant with great, with great omissions and lies to, on four separate occasions to FISA judges. Am I wrong on any of that? No, I think that's that's exactly right. And so what we're trying to determine here is who was involved at the FBI and the Department of Justice that made these decisions to move forward, not only to make the decisions on what to do with the Clinton campaign, but then that's what Mr. Gowdy and Mr. Goodlatter are investigating and the IG, uh, Mr. Horowitz. But we're also trying to look at, well, how do, who made this decision to open up this investigation and why was it done? Because it doesn't appear to me like they had any credible evidence to open up a, a counterintelligence investigation. And that's what we just can't have in this country where you have political dirt that's paid for by one one political party and used against another especially using our foreign intelligence capabilities it's Last just it's just not it just can't happen in this country it can it's illegal the comments seem very arrogant from both James Comey and Brennan this weekend as it relates to the president it seems personal and it seems abusively biased. Um, what is your reaction to their comments? Yeah, I saw those comments over the weekend, and I was I was really quite surprised because, and this is again not helping where we have to go in this country, right? The American people expect the intelligence agencies not to be political, and what you're seeing is the comments that are coming out from the highest levels of of the intelligence agencies from the last administration are quite alarming. I mean, this is just it just it's just way out of character. I mean, you don't see. Uh, former CIA directors making those types of comments like uh, Mr. Brennan made over the weekend. I don't, I don't know why he, he did it. Um, you know, maybe he should retract it, uh, but we'll see. All right. Well, it seems what James Kallstrom said, that high-ranking people throughout the government had a plot to protect Hillary from being indicted, and I would add, undermining Donald Trump. Mr. Uh, Chairman, thank you, sir, for being with us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Sean.